Welcome, dear listeners. I'm Jonathan Carlin. And I'm Benjamin Carlin. And we invite you to join us through the Griffin Door, your one-way ticket to the enchanting world of Harry Potter. So grab your wands, dust off your broomsticks, and join us as we unlock the treasures behind Chamber of Secrets, Chapter 11, The Dueling Club. Oh, man, The Dueling Club. The Dueling Club. This one, it had it had a very nice little uh, actual treasure at the very end as per this podcast. Yeah. Yes, it does. I thought I was like, hey, 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 that's the thing. But we'll we're, get to it. We're there. We've reached the thing. I know. We've yeah. reached the thing. That was exciting. Also, before we dive on in, I just want to give you guys all a quick reminder that our uh, this this podcast, Through the Gryffindor, is going on tour. Our Through the Gryffindor. The Through the Gryffindor. I know. I feel like every single time it's like it, we have to say like Through the Gryffindor is going on Through the Gryffindor. Ex- I know. Exactly. You know, you want you guys hear how clever we were with the name? Yeah. <laughs> it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> I think 2020 tour was already taken by somebody else. 2020 tour. I have a feeling a whole bunch of people were like, hey, it's 2024. You want to know what we should use? 2020 tour. 2020 tour. Which yeah. I don't blame them. It's pretty clever. It is good. Uh, that will be happening. It's kicking off in June. Tickets are on sale now. We are going to uh, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Uh, and we really hope to see you there. You can see us do this show live in person. I know. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It'd be cool to have everybody like sort of in with us. I'm very curious yeah. to see what it's like to do an episode with people in the present. It's like it's kind of like you like say a sentence. You can like look up and like see everybody's faces and be like, what do you guys think? What do you guys yeah. think? Was that funny? <laughs> Was that smarter? No, 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 I know. Okay, we'll delete that. Thank uh, you. <laughs> just, just imagine when we were like through the Griffin tour, they're all like, <laughs> oh my God, hilarious. Yeah. What a great name. You guys are so clever and smart. You guys and stuff. are so good. I know, I know. Uh, ben, I was also checking out our YouTube stats here. We we're at 28,000 subscribers on YouTube. Whoa! So we're Hello. climbing up still closer and closer. A little bit of a surge. I know this is very exciting. As ever, the goal is to hit 100K. 100K. I did also notice I was looking at some other analytics. 30% of the people who watch on YouTube are not subscribed. So there's like plenty of opportunity, guys. Just click that button. Boom. We'll we'll keep moving the needle right on up there. Moving it right on up. Yeah. yeah. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for tuning in week in, week out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, let's just dive into the actual chapter now. Uh, the Dueling Club, Chapter Eleven. Uh, I loved the chapter art. Um, it's just like I guess it's nearly headless Nick floating above the ground. It is the most unusual interpretation of nearly headless Nick, like I've ever seen. I yes, I agree. So and it's actually quite a massive chapter. It's art. a really like, big one. Yeah, compare. I was scrolling back. I was looking at, like the Death Day party. Like when you compare it to like Mrs. Norris, like hanging from like the torch bracket. It's yeah. like. I mean, I would say it's easily four times the size. So quite the large one. Not at all how I picture nearly headless Nick. But I, I can't know tell if that's like it looks like a pirate. <laughs> he does. He kind of looks like a pirate and kind of like a like a manic pirate at that. Um, but yeah, he's also got a sword. He has a sword. Does he normally have a sword? I, you I mean, know, he, he's like like sir. Is he a sir? He's, he's sir. So he has been knighted. He has been knighted. So it wouldn't yeah. be completely unusual for him to be carrying a sword. I do feel like the sword could be like a like a slight little like morsel of of like foreshadowing that like yeah like dueling with wands, but dueling is also done mm-hmm. with swords. Swords are going to be relevant to this plot at some point in time. What is curious to me is that it almost suggests that when he was beheaded, he had the sword on him. Yeah, you right. Know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> or, or, or like when when you're in when you're in like the like limbo and you're getting ready to like choose how you'll go back as a ghost do you get like all of your artifacts like all lined up and it's like mm, let's see what shirt am I going to wear forever and ever and ever? I feel like you'd just be stuck in whatever you were wearing. No, I agree yeah. completely. I just think it's whimsical to think about like, yeah. like being in limbo and having like every object you've ever owned at your disposal to be like, oh man, why not? I know. Boy, that would be interesting. Like if you woke up tomorrow and you're like, okay, so the outfit you pick out today, that's going to be what you wear forever. Yeah. So pick good. Pick good. Boy, that'd be a lot of pressure. It would be. It man. would be indeed. I know. Or maybe maybe it's one of those things where it's like, well, I'm going to wear it forever. So what's it matter either way? Like, yeah, like People just get used to it. Every every 15 years, it'll be in trend. Then every other 15 years, it'll be out of trend. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's how trend works. <laughs> Provided you were wearing something. Well, I guess hopefully, it, you know, hopefully it all fits and stuff, though. Also true. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This That's was that day point. I just wore a baggy sweatshirt. And now I just sort of always am. Now I'm always wearing it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing pajamas for life. Let's go. What? That wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, I know. 
Um, but so yeah, bad. so no, uh, kind of kind of an interesting depiction. But yeah, the dueling club, kind of a fun one because we know in this chapter, Harry's going to learn one of his most iconic spells. Oh, man. Basically hard stop. There is. Yeah, there was a lot happening. I was like going through it. I was like highlighting so many things. So I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, ends up being a longer episode. But you, the listener, will already know because you can see the length and we're just talking now. and We can't. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, so anyway, what, what hit you first? Well, I, I did the very first sentence. I just liked the I liked the sentence blazing with winter sun sunlight because I never think of winter sun as exactly blazing at all. No, I agree completely. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is like almost an oxymoron of a sentence. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, like what we were going for with the word blazing. Yeah, because yeah, it feels like nothing about like, winter is like ever blazing. bright, I guess. Is yeah, all. bright. Yeah. It doesn't seem bad. I feel like a lot of I mean, when we go skiing, I regularly get like sunburned because all the sun is reflecting off of the snow. That's true. So brightness yeah. is certainly a thing, but it yes. definitely is. But blazing definitely has like a heat in intensity to it, um, yeah. which does not seem to like it doesn't seem like a, a Scottish winters is known for its blazing tent for its blazing <laughs> blazing winters up there. Yeah, uh, the next thing that stood out to me was just out at the bottom of the page and I feel like Harry. I mean, this is sort of the theme of this book, but it seems like Harry is like a little more insecure in this chapter than at almost any other time. Like normally he's pretty like confident and courageous and stuff, but he's like he goes to the dorm room to try and meet up with Hermione and Ron and he's like says feeling slightly hurt. They weren't interested in whether his bones were back or not. And it's like, well, you don't know that's what's happening. Like, you know, they maybe they didn't know you'd be down this morning or maybe they just haven't gotten up. Maybe they're at breakfast like you. You don't know. I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> putting what. a lot of words <laughs> in their <laughs> yeah, mouths, right? Yeah. Well, my, well, my jaw hit the floor under the under the basis that Harry's able to grow back all of the bones in his arm in one night, one night. You know, it's like yeah. that's like one of those things where like in my head, I'm like, he's definitely there longer, right? Right. <laughs> you know, like it can't, it, one day it's interesting. <laughs> like the limits you put on the magic like I'll buy that he can grow them back that's fine one night what? I don't know right right <laughs> yeah it's oh it seemed like the last anything we got like after he like had taken like his skeleto it seemed like he was like feeling like splinters you know in his arm or something so yeah. like, in my head I'm like man yeah it seems like it would take a long time for those splinters to grow all the way up into full bone tree bones yeah yeah it does yeah but here I guess there they go but there they go that's anyway. the power of skeleto that's true that's true yeah what I what I do think is then kind of funny though because uh, obviously Ron and Hermione are not in the dormitory wondering about whether or not his bones re had regrown. But uh, then Harry runs into Percy and he's he's asking, have you seen them? And Percy says, no, I haven't. I hope Ron's not in another girl's toilet. Yeah. And I just wrote, Welp. <laughs> well, he is. Uh, it says Harry forced a laugh, which is like the most relatable experience ever. Like, that, <laughs> like sort of like, ha, you're someone who I'm talking to. Sorry, we'll get away from this. Yeah. Uh, and then promptly he goes to the girl's bathroom where, in fact, Ron and Hermione are. <laughs> yes, I know. But not before Percy gives us a very interesting tidbit about how the points work in relation to Quidditch. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right? Go, go into that a little bit. Because he says Gryffindor. He says, "Oh, uh, excellent flying yesterday. Really excellent. Gryffindor has just taken the lead for the House Cup. You earned fifty points." It's like. Okay. 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 Does that mean that if your team gets a win in Quidditch? You overall get 50 more points for the hat. Like, is that is that what it means? I uh, see. This is this is where I think it's interesting that you phrased it like we learned more because I almost feel like this information makes me feel like we learned less. Oh, because like even <clears throat> even the fact that he says you earned 50 points, like it's like, is that somebody being like, no, Harry's spectacular flying yesterday and his capturing of the snitch or even the other teachers being like, hey, one of our faculty removed all the bones in his arm. So 50 points like as like a consolation. Ah, prize, right. Yeah, there was know? a bludger cursed after him. Him, so yeah, 50 yeah. points, right? Right. He was he was in a school shank sanctioned sport where there were teachers present and nobody, including the uh, referee who was there for the safety of our pupils, uh, was able to recognize or notice that this was happening. And so we really need to cover our bases and provide him with uh, non monetary value points. <laughs> well, OK, but in context with the rest of the sentence where he's talking about, he says excellent flying, really excellent. Gryffindor is just taking the lead for the house cup. So it's it sounds like like because of your performance in the Quidditch match we have taken the lead right so I, I don't know it's like my interpretation was that like if if Gryffindor wins the Quidditch game Gryffindor house gets 50 points for the house cup 
Well, that's what I mean, though. It's like yeah. it's like, why would you say it if this was just like a known aspect of like winning the game? Like, right. Yeah. Could, like, you, could you imagine scoring a touchdown in football and running over to the sideline and one of like your fellow teammates being like, dude, great job. You just scored six points. And they're like, <laughs> that's true. They're like, it's like, yeah, I know. I get, that's true, too. It's like, is this just like clunky exposition for us, the reader? Or <laughs> well, if, if so, it's not helping. <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> you know what? I'm, We're still confused. I'm more confused. I know. Um, I, I like to think somehow Harry earned the 50 points um but uh but i don't know yeah it's uh, so i don't know I, I still think poorly phrased still not clear for me still not clear okay okay fair enough fair enough i love how when he does find um like ron and hermione in the bathroom they immediately like um i guess i don't know validate his insecurities like you gave us such a uh, blah, 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 blah. uh we'd have come to meet you but we decided to get started on the poly juice potion so it's like yes we did think about that but we did this instead right like but we didn't forget we know we know we know yeah how's your arm how's your arm? okay we heard about colin that's why we did this we decided it was more important the attacks are getting more serious we got to get malfoy we thought you'd approve right you approve I, I know, but the, here's Harry being like, wow, my friends weren't here to meet me uh, when I got up in the morning, but good news is I have some juicy goss to share with them. <laughs> Unfortunately, they've already heard it. <laughs> like, never mind, Harry. We're up to date on that. Not Jeez. to mention, we don't need you because now me and Ron, we're, we're the dream team. We can make Polly Juice all on our own. Apparently. What is interesting is that they have decided to start making it, and at this point, when they have started making it, they have, they have not acquired all of the ingredients yet. Yeah, you know, I, know. I was surprised by that. Right. And, and even when they do eventually get the ingredients and then like add them, Hermione's like, OK, two weeks from now, it'll be ready. And so that that's kind of like an interesting one where it's almost like I wonder if the potion is just sort of like you can get it like 80 percent ready. It won't be ready until you add the final ingredients that make stuff happen. Right. But like <clears throat> otherwise, you can have this as prepared as you might need, because on some level that might actually mean that poly juice at any point in time could be mostly prepared. Right. Like, like, a, like a two week <clears throat> lead time. Right. There's gotta, like a there's like a maturing process, but you can get it to a certain point where it will like remain in like a stasis. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like wait, waiting for the, that final right. ingredient. To because really tip it over. I think that must be the case because she she goes ahead and uses the knot grass, which is is that the one that had to be like harvested at full moon? No, I think that's the flux weed. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Possibly, uh, but it's hard to remember. Well, um, well whatever the case is, the, the, whatever had to be harvested at midnight or at full moon, like that's not what they're missing. So it seems like they're okay to go ahead and put that in there. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. And it seems like I wouldn't want to waste that one because that's going to set you back a whole month. Yeah, that would be a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I know it's it's kind of interesting to me that they're that they're adding the ingredients now, especially because it seems like from like a writing perspective inside of the same chapter, you could have just been like, we're just about ready to go. We just need to go in like we can add all the ingredients once we get these last two that we need and then just go and do the little classroom heist and then do everything all at once. Yeah. Um. So it, it's kind of like an interesting way to, to like in my head, it means that poly juice can be made incrementally in this capacity of like whatever that crowning you know, like ingredient is yeah. like that's that's it. So yeah, you just um, have to put that put those last couple things in there. Wait two weeks and you're good to go. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, OK. All right. Uh, but Harry does have some gossip, which is that the Chamber of Secrets has been opened before. Yes. Which I, I you know, you must have you must have. I can imagine Harry being like so, so flustered this morning. Like no one came to visit me. It's OK. OK, I found him. I found him. I figured it out. All right. Ready to drop the goss. Oh, crap, they already know. Well, I bet you don't know this. <laughs> yes, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, it's like eventually I'm going to be useful to this trio. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, come on, guys. I got to do something. I do think it's funny, though, that because I think the next page ends up saying like the news that Colin Creevy had been attacked uh, and was now lying at, uh, as though dead in the hospital wing had spread through the entire school by Monday morning. This is oddly reminiscent of like what Dumbledore says to Harry after his uh, interaction with Quirrell in the chamber beneath the school where he's like, it's a complete secret. So naturally the whole school knows i know yeah right i mean colin creevy attacked in the middle of the night by himself carrying grapes <laughs> <laughs> the grapes so like no reason necessarily for anyone to to know i mean i guess it would get out uh like because the gryffindors would notice that he wasn't there sure probably yeah. you know yeah um but yeah, it does get out. It gets out. It yep, gets so out. everybody ends up knowing. Um, can, can you? It feels like if they didn't tell people, it'd be like, wait, there was another attack and you didn't tell us. <laughs> you know, it feels like, yeah, it feels like the information only gets out because rumor spreads, not because the teachers are like, oh, listen up, everyone. 
the danger has increased. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It feels it feels like this would be the type of thing where it's like when there's a snow day, it's like the 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 like school board of directors or whatever deciding whether or not to like close the school. So they're they're like ahead of it before you. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's not safe to drive. Don't come in. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey guys, by the way, we had another attack last night. So basically don't go anywhere alone. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, should, they should they, they feels like they should be telling them uh, that although Ron also says that like I want to know how come nobody's notices notice the monster sneaking around the school and it's like Ron I have news for you. That's still a mystery. Yeah, like why doesn't anyone see it like it must come out at some points. Is it coming out for six? Like I guess it's in the pipes. That's the explanation, but like you know it still must be coming out of the pipes and being giant in the meantime. <laughs> I know. Yeah. The, the fact that it can travel through the pipes, the basilisk never really, it never really makes sense to me because I'm like, pipes are not that big. Pipes aren't that big. Yeah. Like, you know, like for, for, I mean, a drain pipe, a standard drain pipe is like two inch PVC. Yeah. So like, we're not, we're not dealing with like, you know, big pipes that you could like crawl through. Or yeah. Walk through. Well, I th- this might be some like extracurricular stuff where they like the, because even when the, the basilisk would have been put in the chamber, they wouldn't even had indoor plumbing. True. So like when the indoor, I think I, I want to say there's like an archived Pottermore article that explains how the gaunts like opened the chamber and like made the pipes bigger for the sake of the basilisk. Oh, yeah. okay. That would yeah. make more sense. I, I remember the fact that like sometime in like the 1870s, the gaunts did exactly that. Like they, they yeah. like they were at the school. They had the ability to speak parcel mouth so they could like open it up and do all these things. And it was sort of like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Some, yeah. some progress was made because that is like one of those like age old questions where it's sort of like when it comes to wizarding high school where there is no plumbing, it's sort of like, yeah, we still need bathrooms. Don't we? Yeah, we still need let's, bathrooms. Let's, let's not worry about that. Other canon information about bathrooms is that they use the indoor plumbing uh, even though they don't have have to before indoor plumbing was invented they would just vanish it <laughs> just right from the floor it almost just seems whoop. like you would just continue with that process it does seem it just seems like maybe people are like you know what you know what we could do that or <laughs> maybe the muggles got something maybe the right maybe here. the muggles got this one right <laughs> that, that is kind of a funny one that the, the the chamber of secrets like the the pure-blooded mentality location if there ever was one is like being in or is like the utilization of of the basilisk's network yeah. is a muggle invention. That is kind of hilarious. I guess it wouldn't have been at the start, but true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, but it, right. it it is yeah, it is funny. Like, was it always a bathroom, or did it like eventually become a bathroom? Or what was it before then? What was it before then? I mean, you would almost you would almost have to think it was Salazar's office. Oh, they turned Salazar's office into a bathroom. I mean, it almost <laughs> feels like certainly they did. Oh, that's interesting because I mean, uh, can we just jump ahead to it? Because I mean, I feel like we almost have to because okay. we get to the very end of this chapter where there is a reference to um, basically going through the the gargoyle guarded uh, statue yeah. to the headmaster suite, yep. which has the griffin shaped knocker yes. on the door right so the the griffin door the griffin door yeah the the door of griffins and and we i mean i think it's easy to assume that what is the headmaster's office was in fact griffin doors like own private yeah. apartment study right living, living quarters. quarters yeah i mean it does the, it even says this is where dumbledore lives right yes yeah. yes um and that yeah so that's kind of interesting so it's like you know if they all had like their their like locations i mean you would kind of think like it would be such a strange choice on Salazar Slytherin to, to to place his entrance in, like a communal area. Right. You yeah, know, that's like true. Would, yeah. So it would it, almost, but it's um, well, I guess the Slytherin common room. Is, I guess I guess Gryffindor common room is not near Dumbledore's office. True. So there's you no know, reason for yeah, Slytherin like, to be to like, like be in the dungeon to be in the or dungeon. Something. Yeah. It's hard to even say whether they would have had common rooms at the beginning either. Also true. Yeah. Also true. Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, that would that would be like my my sentiment or thought is that like this room would have had some kind of importance to I mean, I, I, like, it must have had some kind of importance to Slytherin. Yeah. To, to like the man himself. Obviously. Yeah. It would have, it must have stood out in some way. He wasn't like, I'll put it in the girl's bathroom. <laughs> okay, yeah. Maybe I, he was. Because I'm know. a quirky guy. <laughs> a quirky guy. No one will think to look there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a choice. Anyway, though, um, moving on from that, Hermione is sort of making a couple of stabs here in the dark and she says maybe it can make itself invisible um, or maybe it can disguise disguise itself, pretend to be a suit of armor or something. I've read about chameleon ghouls. Um, I think it's kind of interesting because like if you were looking for like something that's like shape shifting and menacing, it does seem like she might stumble across Bogarts. It does. Sure. That's true. You know, as, yeah. as like a potential because otherwise nobody knows what it itself is looks like and right. can disguise itself pretty well. Oh, that'd be inter- yeah. If I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that'd be interesting if like yeah, no one can spot it because it keeps looking like different things. Oh, here's an interesting question. So we know that the the Bogger Dementors can still sort of have like the Dementor effect oh. on Harry. You see where I'm going with this? Oh, would a Bogart Basilisk? Would it petrify you? It feels like it would. I, I bet it wouldn't kill you. It seems like, like it, it wouldn't you kill you. You would have like the diet version. Because that's like, I would say <clears throat> that the Dementor Bogart is the diet version. Of, yeah, like I don't think that Bogart could suck your soul out. Right. But it does make you feel the memories. Right. So yeah, I bet Bogart Basilisk could still petrify you, but not kill you. Honestly, given the fact that they study this in year three and this is happening in year two, it stands to reason that some kids greatest fear would be a basilisk. Oh, for I mean, Ginny Weasley against the Bogart has got to be a basilisk, right? You would feel like <laughs> you're it. right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or a diary. Or a diary. <laughs> <laughs> No way. No. What is that? A small black notebook? <laughs> Everyone would be like, Ginny, what's that? It'd be like, don't worry about it. It's fine. It wasn't me. Shut right, up. right. Yeah. It's honestly, it's kind of like uh like Newt's, which is like the uh like the the, the, desk. the desk. Yeah. Um or who else has one? Oh, I mean Lupin, of course, is just like a moon. The moon. They, they just think it's like a like a ball. Yeah. Um so anyway, but I'm curious about chameleon ghouls. I mean, I guess that, that could be kind yeah, of Yeah, that never comes up again. Yeah, because ghouls themselves, I think we talked about this last last week, but like ghouls are not really like menacing creatures. It's yeah. It's kind of hard to know. Does this about. suggest that chameleon ghouls? ghouls could petrify people <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. yeah or or her just not hermione's best guess ron responds kind of unusually to this he just says you read too much hermione and i'm like what how is that hurting you like what? you're in here brewing a potion with a library book you stole from the lot you know like uh, brewing a potion from a book you stole from the library yeah it's but like, but ron lives underneath a ghoul uh, I guess so. So like in, in this particular instance, he might he might actually be like, like, I can't tell if this would be like somebody who had like a fear of of like, let's say like dogs or right. something. And you were like, like talking about like a Labrador. Right. And it's like, yeah, a Labrador is not going to hurt you. OK, it's gonna right. Be, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, I see what you mean. Like yeah. you're reading Hermione. No, it's not chameleon ghouls. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, we have a ghoul. I know a thing or two about ghouls. I know, that lives literally right above me. Yeah. All right. That being said, her reading does eventually lead her to the exact answer it does so, it does indeed yeah so I, I don't that. think Hermione's reading too much it seems yeah. like it behooves her in every way yeah, <laughs> yeah so keep, keep keep at it Hermione yep all right next up we have some more um, clues about Ginny Weasley uh, she was distraught about finding out that Colin Creevy was attacked because of course Colin's sitting next to her in charms because they're in the same year right you know and it's definitely because uh, he was attacked not because she did it but yes. It's like every time there's an attack, you get an update about Ginny, and it's like you just never notice. You never notice. I know. I know. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it, it is really interesting, but it's also like um it, it would be kind of interesting to go through and find each of the lines because like we're we're putting such heavy emphasis on each of these sentences due to the format of the podcast. Yeah. But like it feels and I mean, also, this book is designed more for like, a, I guess, a younger reader in its most traditional sense. Yeah. Um, but like it is starting to feel so obvious to me. I know. Like, like <laughs> yeah. Now, as you're reading as it, but it's like, of course, it doesn't seem unusual. It's like there was an attack. How are people at the castle reacting? Here's how Percy was. Ginny Weasley is having a pretty tough go of it because reasons, you know, we got to keep tabs on her because she's Ron's sister. No, you know? I know. Well, yeah. that's the thing though. It's like, I'm pretty sure like when Mrs. Norris was attacked, though, like the sentence was something along the lines of like, Ginny must have really liked cats because she seemed to be doing with a really hard time with it. Right. And it's just like, and now the second attack, Ginny, who sat next to Colin and Charms was really distraught. It's like, it's like, man, it seems like Ginny is always really upset when one of these attacks happens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's like, even I mean, you even get the clue here where like um, Percy says he's writing to Mrs. Weasley to tell her Ginny was having nightmares. And it's like, you know, it almost like it almost like 
when you read that, it almost just comes off as like a threat that Percy is giving Fred and George. He's like, if you don't stop attacking, you know, scaring Ginny, which also <laughs> such an older brother move. <laughs> just they're just like scaring her. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's like when he says that, it feels like Percy might just be like bluffing to Fred and George. It's like, if you don't stop, I'm gonna write to mom and tell her that you're giving Ginny nightmares or something. It's like, is she having nightmares or are you just gonna tell Mrs. Weasley she's having nightmares? Oh, that's a good point. You know, too. yeah. It's a, especially once you get to know Ginny better it seems highly unlikely that Ginny would ever be going and talking to Percy being like I'm having nightmares right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it is her first year and she is going through some stuff so there's that yeah yeah um, then we've got uh, some some like amulets and such protective devices that started sweeping the school and have a long bottom but a large evil smelling green onion yep a pointed purple crystal mm-hmm. and a rotting newt tail I highlighted these because once again this was a J versus Ben question once upon a time yep. and it was sort of like Ah, the rotting newt tail. The rotting newt you know, tail. I mean, I don't know that I would have remembered the evil smelling green onion uh, anyway, and a pointed purple crystal means basically nothing to me, but I, I, how anybody could pull rotting newt tail out of their hat. I don't know. Yeah, know. I'm probably not going to remember it, even though I highlighted it for that exact reason. Yeah. Um, now, is it is it also true that in their fifth year, Neville is like buys into like the the OWL study aid stuff? Oh, does he? Is this like is this like a Neville thing? He's just like, oh, <gasps> it's like, wait, there's a solution. <laughs> yeah, I I, don't, I can't remember if it's him or not, because I, I think maybe it's like, <clears throat> oh, I don't even know who I feel like Hermione is like, maybe Ron wants to buy some or something, right? And it's it's like actually just yeah, like ground. Up. It's something gross. Is yes, whatever it's something it is. super gross. It's yeah, like, oh. I feel like someone does buy it. I don't know. There are a bunch of the yeah, like study aids that are going around and it, ah, but it'd be so funny of, if it was a devil. He's just like so susceptible to these like he's sort like, of like snake oil <laughs> like right. things. Yeah. Next thing we know, he's like like doing like a multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Neville is definitely trying to sell you some Cutco knives. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, poor Neville. And actually it is really sad because um, like everybody's sort of like, Neville, you're a pure blood. You're definitely not in any danger. And then Neville compares himself to Filch. I know. And it's like, oh, Neville. Uh, yeah, he says uh, th- they went for Filch first, though, and everyone knows I'm almost a squib. It's like, oh, Neville, poor, poor kid. The sentence doesn't even make sense. Like, it's either, uh, it's like either, it's like 100% or zero. It's not almost a squib, you know? It's no, such a binary I, thing. No, I know, I know. Yeah, I, I just feel bad for Neville. Oh, he's, just, yeah. he's just going through some stuff, man. Of course, of course. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Um, so yeah, we already sort of talked about how they Hermione then says they still need the bicorn horn and the bloom boom bloom slang scheme the boom slang scheme. So yeah, and how it, it's like oh, I guess they just started uh, before they got it all. Um, oh, the, but then uh, Hermione's suggestion is that one of them needs to create a diversion in Snape's class so that she can sneak into the cupboard and steal stuff, which doesn't seem like a great plan to me, but. Uh, I liked the line here because Harry says uh, he thought causing mayhem in Snape's class was about as safe as poking a sleeping dragon in the eye, which is just so similar to the Hogwarts house or the Hogwarts school motto of never tickle a sleeping dragon. I know. I wrote the exact same yeah. thing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wonder if this is like a sentiment that is actually like, like if it wouldn't be like an uncommon phrase for a Hogwarts student to say, yeah, you know, it's like, is something very much along this exact, you know, set of lines. Cause it's like, yeah, it is our school motto. There it is. Yeah. Pro- never probably, poke a sleeping dragon in the eye. Probably good advice. Um, let's see. So the, yeah, anyway, but they're, they're getting prepped to, or they're hoping to be able to do the polyjuice trick over winter break yes. because every, once again, Malfoy along with Harry Ron and Hermione are all going to be staying behind. So it's like a prime opportunity to go and kind of sneak yeah, in, get there, in there where there's less people there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah. So what is interesting here, though, is what the diversion they ultimately create is that they are making swelling solutions in potions class and Harry lobs a filibuster firework into Goyle's potion and it splashes all over the whole class and causes mayhem. But while the plan works, what I was so surprised by here is that it means that because what happens is people get hit by the swelling solution and then like they begin to swell up wherever they got hit. But like What's crazy about what's the m- surprising about it to me is that it means Goyle was successfully brewing the potion. Oh, you're right. Like he was doing it right because it does what it's supposed to do. I'm like, look at Goyle. Way to go. Look at. I was like, what a what a small 
unsung victory for Goyle in this moment that he he made that potion. He made it. He's some somehow against all odds. Goyle was, was actually successfully because I'm pretty sure uh, like uh, it says Snape paused to sneer at Harry's watery potion. So yeah. it's like even Harry is not doing a very good job. Granted, he's distracted by about to, you know. Yeah, his plan. Yeah, but to totally sink a three pointer. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> right. Firework from across the room. I know it, that somehow Snape doesn't see. I will say I was there was like three occasions I think in this chapter and I'll try and bring them up as we get to them where I felt like Snape is being like weirdly responsible as a teacher in ways you don't see him like as soon as this happens he says anyone who's been splashed come here for a deflating draft and it's like that's a yes you're not like blaming anyone you're not like you know being mean to anyone is just like oh yeah hold on I'll fix it I got you come here everyone come here I got it don't worry I know we got it uh, right, <laughs> it's like right he's like acting like a real teacher for once you know? yes yeah because I feel like any other time where anybody gets like splashed <clears throat> with potion he's like you know long bottom go up to the hospital wing you know like, yeah it's sort of like it's it's almost like what he's like I could fix it myself but instead you can walk through the hallways of this castle and let everybody know yeah. you messed up or like when Hermione gets hit in the face with the the tooth growing charm and he's like ah, I see no difference. <laughs> it's right, like, right. Like, dude, come on, man. It's like, you could fix it. I know you could fix it. <laughs> yeah, you, also, you're a teacher. You have responsibilities here. You I know, know, but you, like, he's actually doing the teacher thing. He is actually doing the teacher thing. Uh, yeah. But the the next page, though, he does say, "If I ever find out who threw this," Snape whispered, "I shall make sure that person is expelled." Yeah, he um, does say that, which is kind of funny because uh, it seems like he then sort of like makes eye contact with Harry, and Harry says, "He knew it was me. I could tell." And <laughs> it's like I, I just wrote, "Yep." <laughs> yep, I know it's like I mean he is a legitimate so this is like one of those things where it's like is this just an empty thread on Snape's behalf because he definitely knows it was Harry yeah oh yeah a thousand percent knows that it was and then Ron's just like Snape can't prove it was you and it's like I think Ron is right like Snape knows it was Harry and Harry knows Snape knows it was Harry but like he Mm, oh, I cannot quite prove it. Right, right, it's right. Like, we all know what happened, Potter. But <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were throwing fireworks. <laughs> but yeah. Also, I mean, I guess you could like Veritaserum or something, but that's probably illegal. It feels like it should be. It feels like yeah, it should be. Yeah, using yeah. a truth telling potion in, in high school. On students, yeah. Like I mean, later Umbridge does do it. So <laughs> Yeah, but that's Umbridge. Yeah. She's the worst. Oh, she's definitely doing it illegally. Yes, yeah. yes, for sure, for sure. Um, but so then moving on from that, though, we get the dueling club which honestly this is even kind of like an interesting um, little little like tidbit for the school to be like yeah why, why don't we do something like make the kids feel a little bit more empowered kind of give them a greater sense of like how to defend themselves mm -hmm. you know that that type of that type of thing we sort of get like a couple of like little little tidbits that like Flitwick was once upon a time a dueling champion when he was young I know what but that's like one of those details though where it's like why is Flitwick not teaching like again you know you would you would have to assume that like the staff is getting together and like kids are kind of spooked we should probably do something that's gonna make them feel better maybe this is something that could help flitwick you have a lot of experience right oh like, yeah well it's not even the school it's not like it's not even like dumbledore or the school putting on it's like lockhart's idea i yeah you know? right right which even that is sort of like it's kind of like okay lockhart yeah, not, not your worst move not a terrible idea i mean granted you're not gonna be good at it but you know yeah that's the thing like, <laughs> you were just a asking to be put on display here yes and, um, and on on display. I'm glad you said it exactly like that. He'll be on display and resplendent. Uh, I'm sorry, resplendent. He will be resplendent in robes of deep plum. Deep plum. I did. I also circled deep plum and I was like, I don't know what color he was wearing at the dueling club for trivia reasons. Yes, for trivia reasons. Yep. Also, I think it's uh, <laughs> the the planning of it is quite impromptu because they they put up the notice that they're starting a dueling club that day <laughs> they're like first meetings tonight guess we're joining ben. like what if you miss the bulletin right right i know yeah i, yeah. I doubt you could because it sounds like everyone is there i know this is like a very popular bulletin board in the common room you know okay you know so that's another one that's kind of fascinating because it's not dueling club for second years it's dueling club oh, for the whole school i absolutely i wrote that note too i'm like is there any older students here at all right right yes because i feel like as harry ron and hermione get older they will like refer to like first and second years as like looking so like small and such yeah it's like can you imagine if you're doing like a school-wide event and the people you bring up on stage to like be like your your center token people it's like you're really gonna go with the 12 year olds huh I yeah mean, not, not us who have like past defense against the dark arts you know right like we actually 
we yeah i'm like a sixth year i know how to do a, a shield charm and expelliarmus like it's all pretty basic i can really i could probably demonstrate it yeah what, what's cedric diggory doing right now yeah where is absolute great question yeah yeah where is cedric diggory right now he should be demonstrating yeah because i know? bet he's good at it i bet he is good at it you know <laughs> in fact we know he's good at it because he makes yeah anyway anyway um the other the other crazy thing here is that snape is helping at all like Lockhart, like why is Snape helping? Uh, dude, I mean, literally, I mean, the only thing I can think is he like immediately ousts him in dueling because I, I would argue that I think Snape is probably one of the best duelists in the series. Um, yeah. You know, but like I, I it, in my mind, I'm like, I wonder if like Snape is approached by Lockhart and Snape's like, you mean I get to duel you in front of everyone? Okay. The, like, I mean, that could absolutely be it. I, my, my theory is that this might be a little bit more Dumbledore's big planny oh, okay. situation here. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, okay. So there's a couple of things. Okay. The fact that Snape is there at all is just like this is Lockhart's idea and he's coming to be his assistant. Like I agree. It might be fun to blast him off stage, which he does do. He does. Um, and that's awesome. Um, but like it just seems like it it seems out of character for him to want to help. But um, there is a point later on where he specifically he specifically pairs up Harry and Draco together. And then when they're having their duel, he whispers to Draco like summon a snake, basically like, oh, oh he oh. tells him to he tell either tells him to summon the snake or gives him the spell to summon the snake. I see what you're saying. So like it's like is Snape ask, act. It's like Dumbledore is like. Mm, Severus, I'd like you to oversee this club and uh, try and arrange it such that uh, Mr. Potter and Mr. Malfoy uh, fight each other and make sure that Draco summons a snake. Because I have a theory about Harry and a certain um, ability of his or something. <laughs> we, we we need a way to prove this. Like, yeah, I don't like I don't I I think Snape is surprised when Harry talks to the snake. Yeah, I would agree. But yes. it it wouldn't be past Dumbledore, I think, to tell Snape to arrange a situation in which a snake appears. This is very much like that. Like, keep a keep an eye on Quirrell for me situation. Yeah. It's like, I'm not really going to tell you like why. Yeah. But, like, keep an eye on him. But like, yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep an eye on that kid. Right. Um, I don't know why Dumbledore would suspect that Harry could talk to snakes just yet. Yeah. But like, Let's... but like the other thing is that like Snape leans down and whispers to Malfoy something, which is definitely the snake spell. And then the moment it's summoned, he's like, I'll get rid of it, Potter. Like he doesn't let anything happen. He's just sort of like, okay, the snake's there. Right. Like, you know, he doesn't let it play out. He doesn't let Harry fight the snake or lose to the snake or anything. He just immediately is like, ha ha Malfoy made a snake. I'll get rid of it. Right. You right. Know? Yes, that's true. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that would mean that Snape is, is only so much in on the plan. Like he's not right. really expecting anything to come of this. Right. So maybe after the fact, Snape would be sort of like, okay, interesting that Dumbledore would have asked <coughs> me to do that. And then that happened. Right. You know, because that would be pretty telling all of a sudden. I'm trying to think if there's anything that would have happened in the story so far that would start to lead Dumbledore to believing that Harry could be connected to Voldemort in this way. Uh, I mean, I guess he could think that when Voldemort blasted himself the piece of soul attached to him like does he know about the scar prickling at all well I mean I guess what point? I'm thinking in my head is like does he know does he know that Tom Riddle is a parcel tongue himself I think so yes he does know that and he knows that Tom Riddle opened it before because that that was the cliffhanger at the end of the last chapter is not not how not not who but how okay yeah then I think it fits very well actually because, yeah uh, yeah because I think what would be happening here would be that because we know eventually Dumbledore goes to the gaunt residence yeah and we don't know no not Dumbledore he gets the memory of of the gaunt residence where like they're speaking in parcel tongue and Harry's like yeah why why is he acting so strange Who, yeah wh who's the ministry official who's there do you remember Bob Ogden nice thank piece you. of trivia thank you so Bob Ogden is there and Bob doesn't understand what uh Morphin is, is saying, saying but yeah. Harry does and he's like why is he being so thick like you know come on, what's up with that so we don't know when Dumbledore would have collected that particular memory but if the Chamber of Secrets is being opened and Dumbledore himself knows that it's been done before and if he knows that it was done by Tom Riddle and that could only mean that Tom Riddle could speak parcel tongue and then that now that it's happening again he might be like okay I have a theory of what's happening right. Harry maybe doesn't know 
What's you think happening? maybe he suspects it is Harry? Like Voldemort's like controlling him somehow? I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. Um, I mean, if he has an inkling that, because I think it's by the end of this book that Dumbledore will say, like, I think a piece of uh, Voldemort's soul latched onto you. That's why you can speak to snakes and everything. So like, if if Dumbledore's working on that theory all throughout the year, yeah. it's very possible that Dumbledore is like, it might be Harry, like m- probably not. Not really. Harry, like Voldemort in Harry. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it's like, how much can that, like he doesn't know about the diary. We know he doesn't know about the we diary. We know he doesn't know about that. Or yeah. like Horcruxes in general, although it, this would inadvertently make Harry a Horcrux. Yes. Yeah. Because Jimmy's <clears throat> sort of temporarily a Horcrux. Yeah. While, whilst under the influence of the diary. Um, but so probably what's, what's more happening is that Dumbledore's immediate assumption at this point in time is that it's the piece of soul inside of Harry that's doing it so okay i like that though so but then, he still doesn't know it's a basilisk either right right i guess he doesn't know it's a basilisk no i don't think so okay uh, unless he does and we just don't know that he does but if he does then it seems like he should be telling people to like look around corners with mirrors and stuff it feels like he's like, he's being a little lax in his he's duties. being a little lax because people could super duper die <laughs> right 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 yeah so anyway, but instead, what we currently have is the dueling club. Um, yes. So let's let's move forward a little bit of that because this is just an overall super fun scene. I mean, Lockhart is being straight up like intolerable oh, oh, during oh, this yeah. whole sequence. Like, you know, let me introduce my assistant, Professor Snape. So Lockhart flashing a wide smile. He tells me he, he tells me he knows a tiny little bit about dueling himself. And even sport- that's a little foreshadowing. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. It's like everyone's always like, oh, Flitwick's the dueling champion. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Snape. I think Snape's the best duelist in the school. I know. I know. I I feel like in Half-Blood Prince, the fact that he can just like so effortlessly <clears throat> block every single spell that Harry's blasting at him after yeah. the lightning struck tower. It's sort of like like Snape is Snape can operate at a 10 and he's using level one abilities to block Harry. Yeah. And not for nothing, but Harry's pretty good. Harry is pretty good. Actually, this is that we keep comparing like Harry versus Lockhart how like Lockhart will say he did something. Harry actually does it. Yes. Right. Okay. So there's a line here from Harry where it says um, Snape's upper lip was curling. Harry wondered why Lockhart was still smiling. If Snape had been looking at him like that, he'd have been running as fast as he could in the opposite direction. It's like I just made a note there. I'm like, actually, when push comes to shove, you are chasing him down, trying to attack him in that situation. It's true. It's like it's not like you're not smiling at him. You're not running. You are chasing him. Yes. When when that moment arrives in book six. Uh, No, I know. Yes. Oh, oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. (laughs) Yeah. You're You're so brave. (laughs) you're you're gonna do so great you're gonna do so great (laughs) yeah so i just thought that was a fun little one as Um, well yeah so so okay so then we we finally get lockhart and snape kind of like like teeing up for their duel we get a line here that specifically says then they raise their wands like swords in front of them and i I do think straight up that just is foreshadowing yeah like a reference to the sword of gryffindor being something in there so like this this sort of like sword references coming about i i mentioned it earlier with um nearly headless nick's you know sort of like chapter are where he where he's wielding a sword possibly being like a little hand this one i do just straight up think is is like yeah swords ron even says something like you reckon slytherin's monsters knows how to duel or something and it's like well the basilisk doesn't harry does duel it with a sword i suppose but eventually him and Voldemort do straight up duel they do yeah, yeah. several yeah. times yep yep um uh, <laughs> the, the next line though that we get though uh is um uh, Lockhart says on the count of three, we'll cast our first spells. Neither of us will be aiming to kill. Of course, it's yeah. like, okay, obviously <laughs> yeah, <duh. laughs> like, I'm not about to watch one of you murder the other. It's what a fun dueling club. So hilarious when one of our teachers died. I remember it's like, that. <laughs> it's like, wow. 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 Yeah. yeah. So no, that kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Um, oh, this is the other. The other thing about Dumbledore's big plan is the spell that Snape uses is Expelliarmus. Is Expelliarmus. Is it like, is that what Dumbledore is like? Make sure you're there. Make a Snape happen and make sure Harry learns the disarming spell. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. That I mean, that feels like a big one because I mean, Expelliarmus this is the first time in the series we'll ever see the the word uttered out loud but it is ultimately the spell that harry uses in the final duel yeah. with voldemort yes like, which i think for the longest time it you like when i was a kid reading the books or, or like you know like earlier on reading the books it would frustrate me that he uses expelliarmus i'm like oh come on like really harry like after all this time <laughs> you're still using like the disarming spell and it's like oh because it's, like, it's time to take action harry i know yeah it's like there's a piece of me that like wants him to be like a, like grittier you know yeah. or 
something, but it's like, no, that's not who Harry is. He's just like infinitely noble. Like uh, even down to the very last moment, his, his instinct is to use something that is disarming and not destructive. I mean, it's the, exa- I mean, it's, it's the perfect counterspell because it's like the exact opposite of killing. Yes, it is. It's like, you yeah. know, oh, nope, we will. I think, I mean, I, I, it makes me also think of like, um, like a Avatar, the last airbender. Okay. Like this is Aang's move too. Like oh, he doesn't, interesting. He doesn't like, he struggles for like the whole third season. Like, I'm going to have to kill the fire Lord. Right. And it's like, everyone's like, he even like asks all the other avatars and they're like, yeah, you're going to have to <laughs> like for sure. Are you crazy? Like, yes. And it's like, Aang finds a way and he doesn't, you know, so anyway, and so does Harry <clears throat> and so does Harry. <laughs> yeah, which w- this is a, another one of those things I always think is kind of interesting is that there's the dazzling dazzling flash of scarlet light. This yes. is always like there's there's a huge mirroring effect that's always happening with like the colors red and green between yeah. Harry and Voldemort mm-hmm. where Harry has the green eyes. Voldemort has red eyes, but then Harry has like the Gryffindor allegiance, which is of course red, whereas Slytherin has the green allegiance, um, which is green. Yeah, but yeah. Then and then actually, yeah, I highlighted Scarlet Light too because, like, I, they always show Expelliarmus as being red in the movies, and I, like, I, I always, whenever I imagine Expelliarmus, there's no like laser or like energy beam at all. It's just sort of like it just like it's like a invisible spell it, in my brain, but I'm like I was wrong. It is red. It's just right there. <laughs> it's just right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, laser. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about laser beams in a second here when we get to the basilisk again. Okay. Our, okay. our, our heat vision friend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So then <laughs> yeah, heat vision. <laughs> so yeah, so we get we get Expelliarmus. Uh, Lockhart goes absolutely flying. <laughs> We get the line uh, from Hermione. Do you think he's all right? Uh, and Harry and Ron, who together say, who cares? <laughs> I love that I because I, I, I love it's funny because from a distance, I love Lockhart. But reading this book, I'm like, this guy sucks so oh, bad. Yeah, I mean, he's so f- it's like he's such a fun character in the movies and stuff. And it's like it's fun to make fun of him as a person. He's the worst. He is the worst. Yeah. 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 Um, but th- this is another one like he was his idea for the dueling club and then he gets hit by it and he says that was a disarming charm. It's like, oh, you did know. So he that is know. correct. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> yep. Oh, and then this I, I was so annoyed about this. But if you don't mind me saying it was very obvious obvious what you were about to do and it's like I'm sorry is the line in the book very and not pretty obvious like cop what no. what not that line not that, that line. line we haven't been misquoting the whole time we do no. this. We do this all of the time. I, I, I feel like we'll we'll like have like a line we like fall obsessed with and then like we'll go back and like reread the source material. And like we are saying it wrong. Yeah, I mean um, in the movie he says pretty up. No, he does. Yeah. He does. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so we but, have a reason. But the to movie say it. is the, the actual text is very obvious and I was like, oh, Oh, come on. I know. We actually had a whole candle in the month of January designed around yes. pretty obvious. Yes, we did. Um, and, and we could have called it very obvious instead. Yes. And I don't think people would have got it. No, oh, it would have, not. It would not have been very obvious. Pretty obvious is definitely the correct word. It is the true name of this line, and it's just wrong in the books. I'm yeah. sorry. It's a rare case where the book is wrong, and pretty obvious is exactly what it's supposed to be, and it's not. So that's a bummer. But also, if you want those candles, it's at uh, wizardingcandles.com. Yeah, we have a monthly subscription. It's a lot of fun. Each one has a, a little charm hiding deep beneath the wax. And yes. So as it melts down, you can get like the little collectible charm in there. It's really fun. Yeah, you can. The one this month is called potions master it's got like a nice like tobacco-y smell to it it's very good and lovely it is very good yes it's it's like a it's a it's a delicious scent a delicious scent yes 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 yes. one of my favorites so um if you want to if you want to pick one of those up it's uh, wizardingcandles.com there you go there you go all right let's see next up 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 uh, we get moved through the crowd lockhart teams up devil with uh jff justin finch fletchley yes Yep, um, that doesn't seem like it goes so well. Oh, where's my next? Where's my next moment here? Oh, 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 next we have the duel with Harry and Draco, long awaited. So they almost duel in book one, and they finally get to duel each other in book two. And I think this is hilarious. Okay, the first spell 
Harry hits Malfoy with in a duel is Richter Sempra, which is like the exact opposite spell of Sectum Sempra, which is the last spell he will cast that him in a duel. Oh my gosh, you're so right. I didn't. Yes. Even, I even highlighted Richter uh, Richter Sempra, but yeah. So Richter Sempra makes him like basically double over in laughter. Oh my gosh, this this is just uh, hilarious to me as well that this is the spell. Harry's like he's finally doing Malfoy, and he just turns it into a tickle fight. He know? does. He does. He's like it's like that's it, Malfoy. Here comes tickles. <laughs> Time to get ready for tickles. I know. But but to Malfoy's credit, he's like, no way, Potter. This is a dance battle. <laughs> Tarantulegra. <laughs> you guys, this is the silliest duel that's ever happened. I know. It's like you guys hate each other. Or you just like having fun. Harry Potter and Stomp the Yard too. <laughs> I know. Tickle fight turns into dance battle. Yes, <laughs> let's yes. go. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So yeah, I thought that was so funny. The the first spell he hits him with is Rictus Sempra, which is a tickling spell, and eventually he will hit him with Sectum Sempra, which is a you know sword slash spell. Yes, yes, yeah. much much more menacing, much more deadly. We really <laughs> grow up around here. Do you think so? It says stop, stop, scream, Doc Hart, but Snape took charge. Finite incantatum. To me, that honestly seems like a uh, like a catch all spell that could work in a lot of specific instances like this is not like this is more like your general cure. It's like the Tylenol counter curse, right? It's yeah. like you're not feeling well. Take some Tylenol like, you know, that, that's like the, the like go to. It's like because it, it yeah. seems like Finite Incantatum is basically just like stop making spells be spells, right? Yeah, you know? like all these basic spells. Just stop that. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. just just wipe this yeah. and the effects, right? Yeah, I don't feel like that would work on like everything, but everything these kids are capable of doing, assuming that only the second year showed up. Apparently, apparently, yes, yeah. Like we're Fred and George in this. Like they're not missing this, right? No way. No way. No way. Um, we also get like a little bit of the setup for the eventual um, Millicent Bullstrode and Hermione situation. Mm-hmm. So Hermione believes during the dueling club she has collected a hair from Millicent Bullstrode so that she can successfully transform into her uh, when yes. they do the polyjuice thing. And as it turns out, she is not collecting one of Millicent's uh, own hairs, but instead from her cat. Do you want to know a super fun fact? I, I want to know the most fun fact. Okay, so there. So when they were making the movies, like all the kids have like stunt doubles and stuff or like stand-ins and stuff because okay. there's like child labor laws that when you're a kid, you can't work for more than four hours on set. So like a lot of times they like, well, you know, they'll, they'll have the stand-ins go in there for a while to like save time for like Emma Watson or whatever okay, to gotcha. be on set yep, later gotcha. that day. Well, apparently um, there was like a TikTok yesterday that I saw where uh, Emma Watson's stunt double for the movie Whenever you see Hermione in the full cat makeup, that is not Emma Watson. It is, in fact, her stunt double because Emma Watson was having like a reaction to the makeup in the cat costume. No but since she way. was so transformed, it didn't matter. They could just like use her stunt double instead. So when you see Hermione in the movies, that's not Emma Watson, it is her stunt double. Whoa! I know. That's so crazy. And it's even interesting that she was having a bad reaction to the costume because in, in universe, she's having a bad reaction to the polyjuice. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. It's like perfect in every way. Maybe they just actually took polyjuice and this is just what this actually is just what happened. happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they really committed. Yeah, you know? it's, they, it's yeah. <laughs> method acting. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> it's like it's so funny. You're right. In the polyjuice scene, her stunt double becomes the actual character on screen. Yes. It's like how perfect. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So I like that. Also, there's a line in here where um, Lockhart tries to get Neville and Justin to be like the the star duo that's going to show everyone how to do, I guess, a shield charm. But uh, Snape steps in and says, long bottom causes devastation with the simplest spells, which is just like, I feel like good setup for next book with the bog art. Just like Snape being just mean to Neville. But also maybe this is more Dumbledore's big plan where he's like, no, no, no. Hold on. I have instructions. We need to get Harry and Malfoy up here. I have a plan. Yeah. That, I mean, that that's maybe like I, I think that makes like a little bit more. Th- I mean, it's kind of interesting that they like choose like Longbottom in this particular instance because I feel like Ron's wand is the one that's like been acting up. So it's like it feels like you could have been like, Ron, how about you and this other person do it? And it's like, eh, I don't know about Ron's wand. Right. Like it's, it's not doing so hot. I think he's with Seamus. Is he with Seamus? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting about this line is we get the the, the phrase uh, and uh, said Snape gliding over like a large malevolent bat. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of our our many little tiny hints to the possibility that Snape is in fact a vampire. A vampire. Because we know that vampires, even voyages with them, per Lockhart's published works, um, 
are in fact actual things in the things. wizarding world. Sang- Sanguini. Sanguini, yeah. yes, at Slughorn's party. Slughorn's is, party. Is, is a vampire. We know that Snape it has a rather pale complexion. Mm-hmm. He's always out in the middle of the night. He can constantly uh, be described as bat-like in characteristic. He mm-hmm. can fly without the aid of a broomstick, similar to a bat. Yeah. Maybe he's a bat animagus. Maybe even. that's that would almost be less surprising to me if he was a bat animagus. But that would seem, I mean, Snape's yeah. such an accomplished wizard. It wouldn't surprise me if he just even quietly like like, like realize the marauders were doing it. It's like, well, that's it. I'm doing it too. Uh, that is exactly it. He is yes. a he is an unregistered Edomagus out of spite. Out of spite. He's yes, like, oh, yes. oh, if James Potter can do it, well, well <laughs> I can too. You better believe I'm in on this. You had yep. better believe. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. So anyway, um, I, I always th- I, that that was like one of those theories that we made once upon a time. And like when I started it, I was sort of like, I feel like I can make a compelling argument. And then like by the end of the theory, I was like, I'm sort of buying into sort it a little buying bit. Into like, it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's their, um, yeah, the, the, Vald, or not, pfft. Vampire Snape walks over to Malfoy, <laughs> bent down and whispered something in his ear. <gasps> Malfoy smirked too. See? Uh, Snape, Snape gives him the snake. He tells him to summon the snake. Like, right. why would he do that? <laughs> Oh, like there man. it is right there. Like that is such Dumbledore's big plan. Yeah, that play. No, that's very interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Okay. Okay. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But then we get like a, such a good setup here. And this is another movie uh, scene that I think plays out really nicely. But basically Harry and Draco are going to be facing off once again. And uh, Malfoy says scared muttered Malfoy uh, and Harry responds with you wish right this says it does like under his breath so that like only mouth we could hear but like this is a movie scene that is just so much better oh i know than the yes. book where they're like on on the stage and like just absolutely catcalling each other you know before tickle fight round two i know I guess. yeah like, <laughs> it's about to go down yeah yeah no it's amazing but i i mean i think this is like one of those things like where when you're like in middle school you just you wish because i mean every single time <laughs> i like if i ever had like an argument or a dispute or something like that like in my middle school high school years it would be like three days later later when I would think of the perfect comeback. Yeah. Like it, instead for me, it would have been like, like scared Ben and it'd be like, yeah, a little bit. I'm kind of freaking <laughs> out. Honestly, we got a lot of people watching <laughs> No, <laughs> and like three days later. I'm like, you wish I should. I should, should have, have said, said you wish you wish I was scared mm-hmm. because then it would have seemed a lot more confident. But instead, nope, I, I didn't do it. Yep. <laughs> nope. okay. So then I love it, though, because the next, very next line is Lockhart cuffed Harry merrily on the shoulder. Just do what I did. Harry, what? Drop my wand. <laughs> <laughs> like, he totally calls him out. <laughs> what does Lockhart say after that? <laughs> oh, no, he wasn't listening. Okay, it says it as yeah. the very next <clears throat> sentence. But either way, I feel like Harry's just quiptacular. At the yeah, I know. He's, he's just like in the zone. Firing on all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then Malfoy raises one and quickly bellowed uh, Serpensortia. Ser- yeah. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? Serpensortia. Yeah. Serpensortia. There we go. Even better. Different than what he says in the movie, which is like Subensortia or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, so then of course the, uh, the snake comes barreling out of his wand. This is another one of those instances where it's like weird question, but you think you could eat the snake? <laughs> I know, right? Like is that a real snake or so, is it just like made of magic magic over there? Like the, the mouth will just make a snake because I mean, if so, it feels like it, once again, Harry, Ron and Hermione could have been well fed during all of their camp. I don't know, right? Like, Hallows. Snake. It's like, why are we eating so much snake? Because we're fighting the dark Lord and he's the heir of Slytherin. It's symbology. It's symbolic. Look, and they're super easy to make Malfoy. Remember in our second year when Snape whispered a spell into his ear, then he like mastered it 30 seconds later. It's so easy. It's so easy. Barely an inconvenience. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, meanwhile, while Harry's also using the exact same spell that he learns in this exact same lesson. So it's yeah. just like a very like, on, impactful man. day for everybody. I know, right? No one uses the snake summoning charm ever again. Right. It seems like snake. It seems like Harry could have done this like real reconnaissance work with this spell. You know, true. But like, boom, snake, yo, snake, you understand me? Go listen to that conversation over there and come back and tell me. Because apparently, like when he talks to the snake, it does exactly what he says. It doesn't. It's like. They always describe parcel tongues like the ability to talk to snakes, but I'm like, is it to talk to snakes or to like command snakes? It, yeah. I, well, I, I, this was something that was kind of interesting too, because I, I read the same thing. So he says, leave him alone and miraculously <coughs> and inexplicably the snake slumped onto the floor, docile as a thick black garden hose. It's eyes now on Harry. Harry felt 
the fear drain out of him. He knew the snake wouldn't attack anyone now, though how he knew it, he couldn't have explained. And so this is kind of interesting because it's like it's like in addition to being like a parcel mouth, it also seems like he's got like an intuition around snakes. Like he can like he can like understand like like their inner drive, yeah. their inner motivation, mm-hmm. that, that type of thing. So that that I actually feel like is kind of like an unsung attribute of yeah. his ability. But that's like kind of present when he's talking to the snake at the zoo too. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's like he's, he's sort of like being able to like really get inside of like what they're experiencing or feeling. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, it seems like I'm, I'm surprised that it's not an ability that's used more by Harry. Like maybe he just doesn't like that. He shares it with Voldemort, which like, I guess that's fine. But it just seems like it'd be pretty useful. He could have like helpful snakes, you know? I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, at some point in time, he he has creature and Dobby following Malfoy for him. Yeah. Uh, and it's right. Like, like, it's like you could have a snake do that, bro. It would be pretty cool. It would be. Oh, I mean, my gosh. This would have. I mean, heck, this is your whole plan, right? Go get a snake. Be like, yo, snake, go into the Slytherin common room. They probably don't even <laughs> yeah. think it's that weird to see. All you have to do is slither in. Slither in. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. We're so yeah. funny. Right? Then just come back and tell me what. Like, I bet if you see a snake in the Slytherin common rooms, like people are like, yeah, it's a snake, whatever. There's snakes all over the place in here, probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. How, who's to say the difference between like the statues carved into the marble and real actual snakes? That yeah. Are, that are, yeah. Abs- you know what? Harry is really, really whiffing on this ability. It really, it's true. It's uh, true. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even even going forward, like you know, it seems like Crookshanks and Wormtail, all of all of next book, it's sort of like you could you could have a spy on the inside. Yeah. Or you could just have. A snake eat worm tail. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Could you? But this is the other reason. Yeah. If Harry just had a pet snake, like this, they could be like, you know, that rat's a like a dude, right? <laughs> He'd be like, wait, what? Like that guy, that rat, that rat is a dude. Definitely not a rat. Definitely not a rat. I oh, can yeah. tell. Like, what do you mean it's a dude? It's like a person. That's a that's a person over there. That's a person. Harry, <laughs> come on, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> I would love it if he named the the snake like Harry Jr. <laughs> is there not Harry? Not even a little bit. Not even a little. No hair at all. Little little, little HJ. Little, little HJ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Harry so should have had a pet snake. It would have been great. Oh my gosh, so many problems would have been solved. Maybe maybe that's <clears> something we should we should have or could have worked into our Harry Potter. What if if he was in Slytherin? Yeah. Well, like, instead of having Hedwig, he has a pet snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because he yeah, you're right. Well, we we give him a much better relationship with the Basilisk in that we, particular we story. Yeah, he does yeah. have a pet snake in a way. He does. You he know does. how does he win the second task, Ben? Pet snake riding giant pet snake. <laughs> I, oh man, that was the best part about the whole series. Everything to do with the basilisk. It's always so much fun. The basilisk anyway, is the best. Yeah. So um, Ron is pretty shocked basically yeah. because mm-hmm. he's like, hey, we should probably leave like pronto stat. It's time to get away from all these people. Also, we got to talk because you didn't tell me you could talk to snakes and that's very sus. Yeah, real sus, Harry. Yeah, he says I heard you speaking to parcel tongue snake language, you know, regular thing. Um, <laughs> Ron is really unhelpful. He says, you could have been saying anything. No wonder it was just in panic. You sounded like you were egging the snake on or something. He was creepy, you know? It's like, Ron, read the room, dude. I know. He, Harry's freaking out a little yeah. bit over here. He doesn't bit. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, it is kind of crazy that he can speak a different language and doesn't realize that he's doing it. I know. Like, it is. Yeah. That's sort of like a fascinating a little bit like, of magic aspect there. of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then it's funny to me as well because it's like, uh, it's like, do you want me to tell you what's? Do you want to tell me what's wrong with stopping a massive snake biting off Justin's head? And I'm like, okay, wait, wait, wait. How big is How this? How big snake? was this yeah. snake, man? It's like, I mean, because it would take a big snake to bite someone's head off. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, but yeah. So, but anyway, that's when we learned that being able to talk to snakes is something that Salazar Slytherin was famous for. That's why the symbol of Slytherin House is a serpent. Um, and which I mean, this this feels like it should have been information that could have been figured out a lot sooner maybe <laughs> oh, oh oh i know like people are like what's the monster no one's like uh are there any like snake monsters it could be can we think of anything that's scary and snakeish right oh any, a snake yeah. all snakes it's a snake yeah what do you know yeah what do you know um, um we, we also get confirmation in universe uh and i don't know if this has come up any other time but uh in talking about salazar so and hermione he's basically like you could be his like great 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 grandson or something because he lived about a thousand years ago so for all we know you could be I highlighted that sentence too, though, and I'm like, how are the dates of Slytherin's life not known as part of recorded history? It feels like, so shocking. It's so suspicious that they don't know when the castle was founded. Like there, like it, it feels like there must be magic regarding the secret 
or something. Like there has got to be some sort of magical concealment about the dates because there's there's no reason you wouldn't know. <laughs> there's no reason you wouldn't know. And it even seems highly unlikely that such an iconic figure in the wizarding world, his lineage wouldn't be like well documented. Yes, yes, exactly. Especially because like Voldemort was one of them. Yeah. You know, the Gaunts are they're not that far gone at this point. They're not that far gone. They're pretty loud. They're about pretty their, loud about their, their yeah. Like we should be able to trace it back up to the to the Peverils and to the the Slytherins and when this happened. Yeah. And like, when did he have the kid? Who did he, who was his wife? We I don't know. know. We don't uh, know. But maybe one day we will. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Who we can knows? only aspire to such things. We um, can. Either which way, I think as the chapter starts to like uh, kind of cruise forward a little bit it's i mean it, it's to the point where i'm almost curious whether or not like harry similar to the like defense against the dark arts position is just cursed with bad luck mm -hmm. because the whole like narrative that's being spun around him for one the whole school has just learned that he can speak to snakes which makes him look very suspicious especially yeah. when the school is currently being attacked by something yeah and specifically this is like would tie him to the heir of slytherin i think it's interesting that people like know that he hates the muggles that he lives with like yeah that would look bad on paper mm -hmm. he does have a he had just had like the interaction with filch right before mrs norris's attack yeah and colin cravey's been following him around like a bad shadow the whole year yeah so it's sort of like okay so like you could sort of be like okay he was starting to bother him too much he was taking pictures of him while he's in like in the mud and then justin finch fleshley is like the one on the receiving end of like this supposed snake attack and then everybody's just sort of like, yeah, Justin's really worried that something's going to happen. And oh, yeah. like it's bad. Two seconds later, Harry is found at the scene of the crime for the third time in a row. It's like you would be kind of crazy to not think Harry was doing it. Oh, I mean, you absolutely would. Like Ernie is kind of like all over the all over the case. I will say the only thing Ernie is sort of just like skating past is that uh, Harry's best friend is Hermione Granger. Also true. You know, who's yes. like, yeah. uh, but she's like a muggle born. So what about that, Ernie? Yeah. What yeah. about that? I know. Ernie is so interesting as well because it's like he's Ernie kind of ends up being like a rather prominent Hufflepuff, especially as we get into like Order of the Phoenix and stuff. He's the one who famously has the line like, you know, he's like us old DA lags. Us old DA lags. It's like, okay, Ernie, are you forgetting about all of year two where you totally told everybody <laughs> I was like the heir of Slytherin? Yeah. Remember that? You remember that? Ernie. Ernie. <laughs> Come on, man. I thought we were friends. Yeah. Well, Jeez. Like that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I do. I just feel genuinely bad for for Harry inside of the situation because he's just it's sort of like what is happening and what are the what are the odds that like he is so entangled inside of the situation and keeps being found at exactly the wrong I know. position. The fact that Harry stumbles into Nick and Justin in the situation, just like I'm sure for him, he's just like, why, 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 why? But no, no, not no. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So then, I mean, the other, the like, but before he ends up running into uh, that situation, he also runs into Hagrid, who is carrying the dead rooster um, mm -hmm. in one of his massive gloved hands. This is another one of those like little, little tiny nods where it's sort of like, if you know more about like outer basilisk lore like so we, we just did a video last week sort of like delving into like the history of magic and how basilisks yeah. are not a specific creation necessarily of the wizarding world but more part of like english folklore at large yeah and they do consistently have this attribute that they can be killed with the crow of a rooster right so if if you were somebody who was like invested in and i'd be curious for like people who live um like in england if if something like this would stand out yeah, if you'd be like, oh, dead rooster. I see where this is going. It's like, oh, the rooster. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. What's a big snake that can be killed by a rooster? Of right. course. Of course it's a basilisk. Right. Yeah, I can I can see that um, being a little bit more obvious. The, the other thing Harry, or, but Hagrid's like, <laughs> not to, this is another, it's almost surprising Hagrid isn't understanding what's happening here because he's like so about beasts anyway. True, you know, true, but yeah. and he's got like he has his own theories. He's like, it's either foxes or a blood sucking bugbear. <laughs> like, what is a blood sucking bugbear? <laughs> that sounds pretty bad. I know. Yeah, it's like good. I mean, it's just like a like a cousin of a blast ended screw. 
It can't be because Hagrid invents those. Um, yeah, right. Th- that was what I was thinking, though, looking at it. Um, but uh, yeah. it also says, I need the headmaster's permission to put a charm around the hen coop. Like, do you? Were you? Did you get permission to engorge the pumpkins? Right. You know? Like, right. just do it. Like, you it's know, like the Dumbledore knows. He, Dumbledore, he repaired your wand, right? Like, you guys are cool. You're cool. Yeah. If anyone yeah. asks, he did it. Like, right. Oh no, you protected the roosters. <laughs> right. But so anyway, uh, ultimately, you know, everybody. Once again, this is the other thing that's kind of unbelievable at each of these attacks is that it seems like the whole school just sort of shows up every single time. Yeah. Uh, you know? I know. Oh, it's, I know. It's like it's like there's. I mean, and it, it just can't get away. Like, well, I mean, I guess Colin's attack happens in the middle of the night with but the, the whole with the grapes, yeah. but the whole school knows about it by the next day. But Mrs. Norris, like everybody's like exiting the great hall and they're all like, wow, okay, we got to witness this. And like, once again, this is like everybody just like kind of funnels into the hallway and they're like, oh man, and is Harry here? He is. How wow. about that? And it's the kid that the snake was attacking. What are the odds of that? They seem slim. I know. I know. And then in the meantime, it's like, I, it's like, it's all coming. This is the chapter where like, it's all really coming together in a certain way for Harry because like, he's also like, but if I was, you know, if I was in Slytherin, it would have put me in Slytherin and it's like, but it wanted to put me in Slytherin. It's like he has that like terrible like voice in the back of his head. Like you were probably supposed to be in Slytherin though. I know. I know. Yeah. This, this, this whole book, I mean, Harry really is having some like some serious like inner struggles that, that are relatable in their own ways though. It's like, I mean, I feel like I like going through like my, my middle school and high school years, I absolutely was having like a lot of those instances where it's sort of like your worst thought and you're like, is that just true? Is it just true? Is it just true? Does nobody like me? Yeah. Okay, so um, back to back to um, Basilisk with uh, secret heat vision powers that doesn't yes. ever get brought up here. Um, so we discover nearly headless Nick was no longer pearly white and transparent, but black and smoky, floating immobile and horizontal. So I'm like, this is my thought: is that Nick obviously can't die; he gets the full blast or whatever. But why does he turn black? Why does he turn black, Ben? Because he's burned. He's burned by the heat vision. That's why he's all vision. smoky looking now. I know, it really is kind of strange yeah. that this seems to be like such a common attribute, like the melted camera from Colin Creevy, mm-hmm. the scorch marks during the Mrs. Norris attack, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe the scorch marks. It's kind of like because it was like reflecting off the water in the floor. So like maybe it was like scorching the ground it was looking at, but then like the water was like receiving some of the right. Yes, the heat that makes otherwise. sense. Yeah, it scorches yeah. the ground because that's where he sees the cat. Right, the cat is up there, so it's not burned. So is there any part of us that's sort of like, well, well what is what the basilisk having like terrible aim? Does it have like deadly, but also kind of poor eyesight? Oh, I know, especially with Mrs. Norris. Like they just sneak up on her from behind, like what? And she just looks down and is like, oh no. Right, right. I yeah. Don't know. <clears throat> I mean, because that's the other thing. Like, or maybe Ginny's just doing like a really bad job commanding it. Yeah, that's. I mean, I guess it's possible. But do you think it's not even Ginny? It's like Tom Riddle acting through Ginny. It's true. You it's know. True. Yeah. yeah. Why does he have such a bad aim? I don't know. I don't or, know. Or, or like, why like leave the scene of the crime like without? I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like once the, once the person's fallen down. Although if the if the basilisk just waited like a few more minutes everybody's gonna show up anyway so just just hang out yeah you know have a field day how long have they been sitting there do you think oh that's another good question as well i mean i guess harry stumbles across him and you think it just happened but maybe that's not the case yeah could have been i guess ernie there. says he tells justin to head back up to the common room so maybe it's like just while he's, yeah, yeah like uh, he's left the library he's heading to the common room hey justin zap <laughs> not zap. zap more like what's a what's the sound for hot blast of eyesight i don't know what's a microwave sound like i bet that's it that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> the basilisk <That's> coming <laughs> the, the basilisk moving with the sound of microwaves <laughs> <laughs> harry doesn't what's interesting harry doesn't hear the basilisk this time there's no like rip him kill him <laughs> burn him to a crispy crisp <laughs> <laughs> not talk, not not having much of an inner monologue this time. The basilisk, right, right, yeah, it's kind of chilling out. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I do think it's funny that McGonagall conjures a large fan out of thin hair air, which she gives to Ernie with instructions to waft nearly headless Nick up the stairs. Um, like, what if he just like floats through a wall? <laughs> Oh no! I was like, I lost him in the wall. Yeah, you did what? I, he's how, a ghost. How you gave me a fan? To, how are we supposed to get him back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like how did that not happen? I have no idea. Yeah. It feels like it's a, it is what's supposed to happen because we know they can go through walls. Yeah, they, they are in fact ghosts. Yeah, one of their how's it causing him to turn? <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It is one of those where it's kind of like how do they how do they ever get nearly headless Nick back though? 
Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like you should be able to administer just, any kind you know, of spray him with the stuff, right? Just, just spritz I, a little, little tiny little spritz, spritz just like know. float through the air he's in. Yeah, there, why not? Why not? Um, but anyway, then McGonagall is sort of like, this is out of my hands. Um, there's nothing we can really do. We need to go and talk to the to the headmaster, um, which is, I mean, it, it is wild, like, you know, as time goes on, but like Harry and Dumbledore just have such shockingly few one on one discussions. I know. Um, so, but we were about to get in there. We, of course, get the, the lemon drop password. The lemon drop password. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we we get up to the gleaming oak door with the brass knocker in the shape of a griffin. Ah, uh, the griffin door. The griffin door. And we've made it to the end of chapter 11 and look ahead to chapter 12, the polyjuice potion. Oh, yeah. They're about to morph. They are about to morph. I'm looking forward to talking about the chapter <laughs> arc for next week. Oh, boy. Yeah. Rather glorious. We finally indeed. get a look at, I guess, what... Uh, oh, I forget which one Harry turns into. It's Goyle. It's Goyle. Goyle. Yeah. Yeah. What Goyle must look like. Right. Right. Yes. He's a looker. He's a looker indeed. Mm-hmm. Jay, do we have a review? Oh, we sure do. Let me go ahead and pull one up right here, right here for you right now. All right. Today's review comes from Emma Sue Ann. Hey, Emma Sue Ann. Hope you're doing great. Emma Sue says, hey, brother. I've been a huge fan for many years. I started watching your YouTube videos when I was in middle school and I'm graduating high school in May. Wow. Whoa. Thank you for watching for That's so amazing. long. I was so excited when Through the Gryffindor came out. It is the one of the highlights of my week. Thank you so much for making such great content. I have a question about Tom Riddle that I've always been super curious about. I've always wondered what happened to the two kids in the cave and what Tom Riddle did to those two kids. I was wondering if you had any thoughts or theories about what happened. Oh, man. Okay, so... I mean, it's an interesting question. I've sort of thought the same thing before. Like, it's kind of remarkable that he was able to... Do you think he's apparating them to the cave? Like, yeah, how do they get down there? I think he's using some kind of... Like, they're obviously accessing it magically. They must be, because it seems like you almost have to access it magically. Yeah, like, I've always thought he was, like, probably just, like, floating them down or something. Right, right. I mean, and I suppose that's kind of like one of those things where it's like the the tormenting could could be like anything from actual, you know, like young Tom Riddle torture, like when the like, I think, doesn't he like hang a bunny from like the ceiling? Yeah, that also seems like a certain amount of like floating. Right. Must yes. Have occurred. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, it's it is kind of unbelievable that he's harnessing his abilities and performing so much magic. Actually, the floating is kind of interesting because Voldemort's ability to fly unsupported is one of his like key and incredibly remarkable yeah, magical attributes. Mm-hmm. So if he if he as a young boy was learning how to wandlessly yeah, scale levitate this mountainside. Right. Like I mean yeah. that that could be like the forerunner as to like how he eventually can fly through the air without broomstick. Yeah. But so cuz if, if what happens is he gets in trouble for bringing the kids down there, right? Right. And she tells them about that, but it doesn't sound like the kids are like dead. Like no. they get back up it, as it's, well. It seems like the orphanage would have had to have informed Dumbledore if the kids had died. Oh uh, yeah, I think you're right. Now that being said, I kind of feel like they end up in that cave anyway. <laughs> as in theory. As in theory. Oh, because these would be like crap people who knew about the cave. It would be people who you know? knew about the cave. And like would- Dumbledore talked to the to the Wolves Orphanage lady and she told him that two kids were there. So if like Dumbledore is looking for information and like memories about Voldemort, you know, like these are people who could know about the cave. Is it the case? Correct me if I'm wrong. Do they eventually try to go to Wool's orphanage and like Hermione thinks it might be a good idea and they get there and it's like rubble and Harry was like, he hated this place anyway. He never would have done something here. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's like one of those where like, I wonder if he hunted down as muggles, anybody who was at the orphanage with him. Oh man. You know, Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I wonder, like, I wonder if like the, the lady who worked there or something. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Seems pretty bad news for her, I bet. Yeah. Because that would be like links to his past. Like, he does seem like someone who would try and erase his, like any information about his own past. Because, I mean, that's that's kind of like what's wild is that like Tom Riddle to the other kids at the orphanage is a terror. Yeah. You know? But then when he gets to school, he's incredibly well liked. He's yeah. the handsome, <laughs> highly talented, like, you know, school. Uh, award for services to the school like all the teachers sort of like you know fast track for minister for magic like you know I mean there's there's all this positive accolade attached to him like he he changes he turns his act around a lot and one of the things is that like Dumbledore single-handedly knows 
some of the like the darkness surrounding him. And mm. it's always like it's always one of those things that like Voldemort can't quite clear up the fact that Dumbledore was the one who saw through him, who saw some of like that. Yeah, that like early behavior. But the other kids at the orphanage might know and and be able to like identify or recognize like, hey, wait a second. I know who you are, right? So they would all be liabilities. Yeah, and especially if he's hiding one of the Horcruxes there and he doesn't think anyone knows about the cave and the cave is full of in theory, which, was, you which know, we you know, know our muggles um, who he yeah. killed in, in his. Yeah, yeah, I think I think those kids grew up to be adults who were later murdered by Voldemort is what I think. I think there's almost <laughs> no way around. That. I haven't really thought about it before, but I do. I bet th- I think that's what happened. This is like one of those things where it's like I like kind of similar to Lockhart you know it's like I mean he's he's terrible I mean you can laugh at him but he's terrible like I I think so often I laugh at Voldemort because I'm like he's just he's always in his own way he's always like every plan he has is always a dumb plan like every like his pride is constantly the issue he mm-hmm. could, there's so much he could have done to like have defeated Harry without doing all the things he that does. he does. Yeah. But like, this is one of those moments where you're just like, this is a dark guy. Oh, yeah. Like, this you can make like a terrible. really, really dark series about, like, that goes more into what Voldemort's up to and what this is actually looking like for the victims. Right. Man. Whew. Good question. Good question. Took me to a dark place. Yep. But yeah, good question. Just like it took them to a dark place. It did indeed. <laughs> Uh, oh man laughing helps laughing helps yes oh, but, but the good news is we can all come together and and enjoy the series and harry's triumph and his his nobility and expelliarmus and all the rest exactly so uh, uh i think we're gonna end it on that note I thank know, you for the review if you want us to answer one of your questions make sure you leave a review over wherever on whatever app you listen on yes absolutely it helps the show a lot yeah and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. 100,000. We're going to make it, guys. We, we can totally it's do it. It's going to happen someday. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Make sure you join us next week for Chapter 12, The Polyjuice Potion, here on Through the Griffin Door. Today's episode was edited by Isabel Chrisley. Vaishan Brandon does our art. Catherine Stein is our production manager. And the show is hosted by me and Jonathan Carlin.